Kol Halom Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai Bahashem Racha Kodash. All right, that's who this world ignorantly calls God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit in the ancient Paleo Hebrew language. Next, double honors to the elder apostles of the Great Millstone who rule very well and teach very well and oversees the Tabernacle of David. I also want to give a quick shout out to the head of the Men of Israel camp, whom I teach under in Greenville, South Carolina, Brother Kazak. All right, next, I want to give a quick shout out to the sincere Akim and Akwa, who diligently and sincerely are following and believing in the gospel that we're bringing forth to you in these last days. All right, see, I'd like to say Shalom. It's your brother Alaya coming back with another lesson exhortation through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai in these last days for the sincere and hopefully elect, man. So, without too much else to say, as you're about the title, man, <clears throat> man, we just want the penny, man. You know, and it was in my spirit to neatly. Uh, remind, you know, sincere and hopeful brothers of why we're even in this truth to begin with, man. You know, we just want the penny, man. We got to stay focused on this penny. And if you don't know what the penny is, you know, hopefully this lesson and exhortation be edifying unto you, man. This is the book of Matthew chapter 20. I'm going to start at verse 1. It says, For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard, man. Which reminds me also, uh, I do want to grab this preset real quick. Um, uh, Lord willing, I can find it real quick. Hold on, so I can. It literally just popped in my, into my head. Man, I want to see if I can grab it real quick. Uh, hmm. Oh, okay, okay, let me see. No. All right, so uh, it's not what I wanted. Yo, Basham, y'all, shout out to it Come back to me later. But basically, as the scripture said, man, uh, for the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is in householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard, right? So this laborer, if I mean, so like in this householder, if if you're unaware, man, is really talking about Yahweh Shai, man. You know, I was trying to get the preset where, where it explained, uh, if a brother can find it, can you put it in the uh, comment board? Or if I find it, I'll bring it out, you know, where it goes into how Yahweh had his truth out from the beginning, man. You know, and he that shows that even the Heavenly Father went out early, man, and had the truth out here available. You know, but to stay on through what this is going into, man, the household is Yahweh Shai, man. And the kingdom of heaven is obviously his kingdom, you know. But it says the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard, right? Those laborers are going into, obviously, his disciples, which we know later on became apostles. And as today, man, those apostles are making more disciples, which are to become apostles, and more disciples, which are to become apostles, man. You know, it says in verse two, and when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. Right. So that penny a day is going into just the labor, man. Uh, Really, that penny, as it's going into in comparison, is the kingdom of heaven, man, or a piece of the kingdom of heaven. Like, for example, let me grab this for you. Uh. If I can spell correctly. Uh, yeah, I still can't spell. All right. Uh, all right. Here we go. Luke chapter 19. And I'm going to start at verse 12. All right. It reads. He said, therefore, a certain nobleman went to a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. Verse 13, and he called his 10 servants and delivered them 10 pounds and said unto them, occupy till I come, right? Which means occupy over these 10 pounds till I come back, right? It says in verse uh, 14, those pounds is going into the truth that for just, you know, real quick, those pounds are going into the, the measure of truth that the Lord has given those servants, right? And they're supposed to do with those, with that measure of truth, they're supposed to go and spread it, man, you know? So verse 14, but his citizens hated him and sent a message after him saying, we will not have this man to reign over us. 
And it came to pass that when he was returned, having received the kingdom, then he commanded these servants to be called unto him, to whom he had given the money, that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. Right. So that that nobleman went, got himself his kingdom, as he was supposed to, and he's calling his servants back to see, you know, by trading, how much have they gained? Right. Which means through spreading this truth, how many more believers, you know, have received it, you know, through those works that you had. It says in verse 16, then came the first saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained 10 pounds. Right. So that one pound you gave me, I was able to get 10 pounds, you know, for that one. Right. So me being one believer, I was able to find 10 other souls who believe me, you know. It says in verse 17, and he said unto him, Well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in a very little, hath thou authority over ten cities, right? So those same ten believers that came and followed that man, the Lord said, Now you have authority over those men, which they're going to have their own portion as well. Those ten cities is each and every individual soul that believed that one servant, they have their own city. But that one man who brought those ten uh, souls to Yahweh Shai, which is uh, the nobleman, if you weren't, you know, following along. Uh, Yahweh Shai has given that man authority and power over those 10 men's cities, you know. It, it, it follows, it's basically, you know, up the chain of command, if if that makes sense for you. You know, the 10 came into truth by that one servant, and that one servant came into truth under Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai has the authority to give that one servant a city. He gave him power over 10 cities, including his city, which, which is really 11. But you get the point, man. They all received just rewards for their labor and for their work in this ministry, right? In this gospel. It says, uh, continuing on, in verse 18, And the second came, saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained five pounds. So he was only able to get five souls. But guess what? That was according to the measure Yahweh I gave him. And look, now what is he going to tell that servant? Verse 19. And he said, Likewise to him. Be thou also over five cities, you know, likewise, what happened to the first man it says in verse 20 and another came saying, Lord, behold, here is thy pound, which I have kept laid up in a napkin for I feared thee because thou art an austere man thou takest up that thou layest not down and reapest that thou didst not sow. And he said unto him, out of thine own mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. Thou knewest that I was an austere man, taking up that I laid not down, and reaping that I did not sow. Wherefore, then gavest not thou my money into the bank, that at my coming I might have required mine own with usury. Which means, uh, in, in layman's terms, even within the work, which is what this is talking about, <laughs> instead of you doing the work and you doing the will, why not let another brother know, look, I, hey, I'm out, I can't do this, you do it, you know? That's basically what Yahweh is saying. Allah, you, with the wisdom that you have, you weren't able to benefit me at all, you know, which is why he's calling him a wicked servant. He actually wasn't able to gain any uh, more pounds for the Lord. And therefore, you know, he's going to receive just reward for, you know, his works. You don't labor in this truth. You you don't want to work to receive that penny, right? Going back to the topic, you're, you're not going to receive the reward for, you know, flipping the Lord's penny for lack of better terms, right? So let's go back to Matthew 20 real quick. I wanted to grab that to show you uh, right here in verse 2. And when he had agreed, Matthew 20 and 2, and when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. So that wicked servant the last time, uh, he didn't do anything with the, the penny that the Lord had promised him. So therefore, he's not going to receive that penny. Because if you are not following along, man, this penny is the reward of the kingdom of heaven having rulership with Yahweh Shai in his kingdom, man. This is what we're in this truth for. This is what we're laboring for. You know, and you have to remember that because if you do not labor for that penny and you are so-called in this truth, man, you are a wicked servant, man. You've forgotten the cause uh, that we're in this truth for and to push this gospel in the first place, man. You're a wicked soul. And therefore, guess what? You know, you will be destroyed. Like the scriptures say, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, you know. Because you received the judgment of a wicked man, you know. But going on to, you know, the sincere believers, what their reward is, says in verse 3. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. So real quick, before we continue, I want to show you how Yahweh Shai, because this parable is like an unto Yahweh Shai in his kingdom, right? And let me prove that real quick. I want to go to Matthew chapter 22. 
and get verse 9, right? It says, this is how I I talking once again. It says, go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid to the marriage, <laughs> right? The marriage is what? The kingdom, right? When we, when the sincere, hopefully let, receive that salvation, and they're given new righteous bodies to dwell and to reign and rule with Yahweh Shai forever and ever, you know? It says in verse 10, So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good, and the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment, right? And um, what is that wedding garment going into? And I gotta grab that too real quick. So I can... Uh, All right, Revelation 79, all right, it reads, After this I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our power, Yahweh, who sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb, Yahweh shot. So, those white robes, is, is what is granted to those who are redeemed and who are saved, who, who are delivered from the destruction of Babylon, right? Uh, let me see if I can get this preset for that real quick. All right. Revelation chapter 19 and verse 8. It reads, uh, actually, I'll start at verse 7. It reads, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the lamb is come and his wife hath made herself ready and to her right to his wife. Right. Which is the Lord's wife, which is those who did the labor and, and they were uh, blessed to receive what it says. Uh, well, really is the marriage. They're blessed to, to be joined with Yahweh Shai in his kingdom. It says in verse eight and to her was granted that she should be arrayed right and and fine linen clean and white for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints right so this white that is being referred to is talking about uh the new bodies really ultimately if you can receive it but it's going into those who truly actually believed in yahweh Shai, and they did what they were commanded to do you know so going on back uh it's like matthew 20 or was I at 22 still? So let me check. It's like, all right. Yeah, yeah, I was at 22. All right, so it reads Matthew 22 and verse uh, 10 again. It says, well, 11. It says, and when the king came in to see the guest, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. Now, like I said, that wedding garment is the white righteousness of the saints, man. So if you don't have on a wedding garment, do you think? That you were the chosen man? Do you think that you were the one who was supposed to be there? Absolutely not, right? As I said in verse 10, they found both good and bad servants. So the bad servants are going to be there amongst the good servants, but only the good servants are going to be delivered, which is what we can see that right now today, man. There are so many different so-called camps and so many different believers of the truth of Yahweh Shem Yashai. They claim to be doing the work. They claim to believe in the names, right? They claim to be, you know, uh, honestly repenting and sincerely Praising the worshiping Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai in these times. However, the Lord still said there's going to be bad guests amongst us, man. There's going to be good guests as well as bad guests, you know. And it says in verse 12, And Yahweh Shai, and he saith unto them, unto him, right, friend, how camest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. So, yes, even Yahweh Shai refers to the bad servants as as friends, just as Yahweh Shai did. Uh, what was that brother, uh, that man's name? Judas, man, just as he did Judas when Judas was betraying him, man, he called him. He said, "Well, will thou betray me with a kiss?" You know, and he referred to him as friend later up in the chapter. You know, but still, you know, yes, you Yahweh Shai is allowing the bad servants to dwell among the good servants. However, when they show up to this wedding, those bad servants will not have on a wedding garment, which means what? They were never a part of this thing, man. They were never. They did their their part of the ministry, which is what to sift and to deceive you know, the nation of Israel, but still the Lord is going to deliver his, his sheep, man. Still, as you said, my sheep heareth my voice, man. Not the, not the wicked servants voices. And it says in verse 13, 
Then he then said the king to the servants, bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, man. <laughs> Which means what? Ultimately, he's not going to be received amongst the delivered, man. He's not going to receive that blessing of, of receiving the kingdom of heaven, you know, and, you know, basically getting delivered and ruling and reigning with Yahweh Shai, man. He's going to have to be what born through the seed in the kingdom. He's going to have to come back as a, as a newborn baby, but we're not going to. Get into that right now, man. Going back to uh, the original parable, Matthew 20. And we're going to continue on to verse 3. He went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. As we were reading, man, Yahweh Shai commanded his, which is the, if you didn't see it real quick. There's the main reason I came to Matthew 22. <laughs> Yahweh Shai commanded in verse 9, Matthew 22 and 9, Go ye therefore into the highways. And as many as you shall find bid to the marriage. So this is that same thing we're reading right here in verse 3. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. After he sent out that first group, he seen other people being idle. So what? He hired them as well. It says in verse 4, And said unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, I will give you. And they went their way. So everyone is agreeing. Look. Yahweh is saying, you're going to get the same penny now based on your works. If, if, if you've done right works, you're going to receive this penny, man. You know, in verse five. Again, he went out about the sixth hour and ninth hour and did likewise. He's telling all these people, you do this work for me. I will give you this penny. I will give you parts in my kingdom, which is what this penny is compared to, man. It's referring to the kingdom, right? The reward of the kingdom. You're not going to get this kingdom automatically just for knowing your house shall exist, right? Like some Israelites thought, matter of fact, let me get that real quick in the book of Acts. They thought just because they know about your house shall now. Oh, we do believe you're the Messiah. Are you going to give us the kingdom now? <laughs> right? Let's see. Acts chapter 1 and verse 6. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the father had put in his own power. So he said, look, first off, it's not for you to know that. It's not for you to know the time when the Lord is going to do it. Just trust him that he is going to do it. Because Yahweh, the father, he put it in his own power when he's going to reveal the kingdom, when he's going to bring the kingdom to, you know, the world. You know, it's not on your own accord, not just because you hear about Yahweh Shai. It's not because you even claim to believe in Yahweh Shai, because there are going to be some guests who think they're going to be a part of that marriage, right? And as you said, they're going to be cast into outer darkness, man. All right, going back to Matthew 20, it says, uh, verse 6, Matthew 20 and 6, And about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing idle, and saith unto them, why stand ye here all the day idle? They say unto him, Because no man hath hired us. He saith unto them, Go ye also into the vineyard, and whatsoever is right, that shall ye receive. Now the point you guys got to pick up on this is, they have, up, up until this point, verse 7, there have already been laborers working in this truth, man. Whether it be for 30 years, whether it be for 25 years, whether it be for 20 years, whether it be for 15 years, whether it be for 10 years. Whether it be for five years, man, whether it be just one year of laboring, depending on when the Lord Yahweh Shai came and sat with you and told you, go and do my work. It could it could be that much of a, a, a vast difference from 30 years to one year. Let's see what Yahweh Shai has to say about how long you labored in his truth, man. All right. It says in verse eight. So when even was come, the Lord of the vineyard saith unto his steward. Call the laborers and give them their hire, beginning from the last unto the first. So, look, he said, the ones I went to last, go to them and be like, look, well done. You did what I commanded you to do. Receive that penny, right? And he said, from the last unto the first. So, the people who've been working the longest, they're going to get their, their pennies uh, first. I mean, last, some, right? They was working first, but they're going to get their pennies last. But they still are going to get what they deserve. All right, let's read this, though. It says in verse 9, and when they came... That were hired about the eleventh hour, they received every man a penny. Right? All they got was a penny, right? That's what they agreed upon. It says in verse 10, but when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more, and they likewise received every man a penny. Right? So they're like, wait, hold on. We've been working from the beginning. We were the first ones you sent out. And we get the same penny these brothers did, and they've only been working for a day, you know? 
or not not I mean they slog him. They were only working for an hour and they're getting the same penny that we've got and we've been working for eleven hours, you know? Roughly, you know, basically, and making a lamb's turn layman's turn so you can understand. Even though the timing, if you want to be real technical, the timing is much more different with the Lord than with man. <laughs> Cause if we be in for real, Matthew twenty and two says, and when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent them into his vineyard. Now we already know, according to the scriptures, that <laughs> a day with Yahweh is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day, right? So if it really is a penny a day, as the righteous householder said, if we're being truthful and honestly, man, there's nobody speaking in today's terms that have been laboring in this truth for over a thousand years, man, that is still alive. You know, yes, you might have, you know, died and come back in your lot if it be a lot. But however, I mean, it's still a new day. You know, if you know what I mean, you're having to be taught the truth all over again and then work again. You know, Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Bashimi Shai is going to, at the end of the day, reward you according to your works, man. So if he said you get a penny a day and you get one penny, guess what? That was according to your works, man. Let's read this again, right? It says, and starting again at verse 10, but when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more and they likewise received every man a penny. And when they had received it, they murmured against the good man of the house, saying, These last have wrought but one hour, and thou hast made them equal unto us, which have borne the burden of the heat of the day. So like, and, and which have borne the burden and heat of the day. Like, look, we've been laboring this thing, man. We've been laboring this thing for, for 30, 40, 50 years, man. And we get the same penny as those who just came in. Let's see what your house has said, man. It says, Verse 13, but he answered one of them and said, friend, I do thee no wrong. Did as not thou agree with me for a penny? Take that thine is and go thy way. I will give unto this last, even as unto thee. It, is it not lawful for me to do what I will with mine own? Is thine I evil because I am good? <clears throat> so like him, y'all. Uh, so Yahweh Shai is explaining, look. Did not you agree with me for a penny, you know? And he's saying, is it not even lawful for me to do what I want with what is mine? If you've been working as we agreed and you received a penny, and I want to give a, another brother who is still within that, that last hour, and tying this to even today's time, keep that in mind, brothers. Let's say right before Yahweh Shai comes back, it's probably not even been a full day yet, this brother realize he's an Israelite and he's on the run. He's following you because just like we, brothers, I got to remember, just like seven women are going to take hold of one man, there are going to be certain brothers just as well who hear about your works and what you've been doing and he want to be with you. And guess what? In that last moment, the Lord can have mercy on that brother and, and give him salvation just with you, man. Even though, guess what? You've been laboring this thing 10 years, five years, even three years, man. And right at the last Look, right at the last moment, a brother thinking he's about to die, and he believes your words that you spoke. He believes in the name Yahweh Shem Yahusha, and he gets delivered. Are you gonna complain to Yahweh Shah? Man, Yahweh I was in the, I was out here, they have food for days, man. That this brother, he he just now lost his house, and and he he get delivered with me. You can't say that, man. You know, if that brother didn't receive that mark, guess what? You can't say that, man. The Lord was dealing with that brother to keep him from the mark, right? That jab. The MOTB. And guess what? The Lord delivered that man through you, you know, as we read earlier. And uh, when it said, did did you take that truth and flip it? Did you have five? You know, did you have 10? You know, that's the same thing. You got to have works in this thing because it's for not just for you. It's for other brothers and other sisters to believe those works and follow you, you know, you know. So you can't complain that your your works have fruits, man. And you can't complain that those fruits get the same reward you do. Y'all have the same Lord. Y'all working for the same penny, you know? As it says in verse 15, again, I'm going to read it again. Is it not lawful for me to do what I will with mine own? Is thine eye evil because I am good? Verse 16, so the last shall be first and the first last. For many be called, but few chosen. So at the end of the day, that's what it comes down to. Were you chosen? We shouldn't be worried about, well, see, brother, I've been in this truth 50 years, man. So uh, you can't tell me nothing, you know, or brother, I've been in this truth 50 years. You ain't got nothing on me because, look, we're not in this truth. 
Let me get that real quick. Let me get this real quick. All right. Romans chapter 3 and verse 27. It says, where is boasting then? Right? You can't be like, well, brother, look. I've been in this thing 50 years. Your, your words, your faith ain't got nothing on me. Because guess what? At the end of the day, we're receiving the same penny. So where is boasting then? It is excluded by what law of works? It's like, by what law of works? Nay. Why? Because guess what, brother? It don't matter if you've been in this thing 100 years. We were we working for the same penny. By what law of works? No, it ain't about what you do, but by the law of faith. Did you believe at the end of the day? Were you called at the end of the day, right? Were you chosen? I mean, that's what I meant. Were you chosen at the end of the day, man? Are you actually going to be delivered at the end of the day? That is what matters, man. So where's boasting it? We all believe in you. How about Shemir and Shah? I'm speaking to those who actually believe in you. How about Shemir and Shah? Sincerely. We all believe in you. How about Shemir and Shah? You know, and Lord willing, I may even be at that number. You know, the what is what actually matters is did we have this faith, y'all? Do you believe? Because there are many brothers around us who are those wicked servants, man. They're not pushing this. They're not doing the work, you know. And that's that servant is gonna receive just reward, man. Trust and believe that servant, that wicked servant, is not receiving that penny, man. Those brothers who are sincere and actually doing the works. To receive that penny, they're going to receive that penny, man. So it, it, we shouldn't be, hey, brother, your penny is shiner, shinier than mine, brother. Your, your, your penny, your penny is shinier than mine. Man, what, man? Man, I dropped my penny a couple times, but I got picked mine back up. You didn't even get a chance to drop your penny, brother. Complaining, man. Man, at the end of the day, we need to be happy that we even received the salvation, man. Let alone comparing brothers' lots to each other once we have received the kingdom. And we know in the kingdom now, we're not going to be envious of, of one another, man. We know that. But, however, on this side, working towards that side, receiving the kingdom. On this side, you got certain brothers, you know, saying things to cause offense, man. Well, I, I've been, uh, you're not doing the work unless you've been in this truth for over 30 years or over 25 years. Man, that's not that's not the case, man. That's not the case. Because Yahweh Shah said, there's going to be something that come in within that last hour. And they're going to see the same penny as you. You know? So, man, like I said, man, we, we just want the penny, man. That should be the main focus right now, man. Getting that penny, man. Receiving the kingdom of Yahweh Shah through spirit and in truth, man. To be able to walk through them gates, man. You know? That's what we're working for. So, with that, man, I hope this lesson exhortation was edifying to the sincere, hopeful elect of the nation of Israel. All right, and see y'all. I like to say shalom until next time. Shalom.